All right, good morning. It's February 15th. Welcome to the C4 Metro subcommittee meeting. Uh, Commissioner Savas and Councillor Sherman as co-chairs, the meeting is yours. Great. Well, I'll introduce myself and then have Councillor Sherman introduce himself, and then we will do introductions along the way here because a lot of new faces. So I am Paul Savas. I'm a Clackamas County Commissioner, and I am the co-chair of this C4 Metro subcommittee, a subcommittee of C4, which meets on the first Thursday of every month. Councillor Sherman. Very good. Uh, Councillor Brett Sherman from Happy Valley, also co-chair of the C4 Metro subcommittee. And uh, I'll uh, we'll just jump around the room. Shall we go to uh, Commissioner Shaw next? Yes. Good morning, Mark Shaw here. I'm uh, the uh, county rep to MPAC. Very good. Why don't I just kind of run through the list very quickly uh, who I see on my screen in order. Uh, we'll just jump over to uh, Ms. Burig. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Burig, and I am a staff for Clackamas County. I staff a TPAC for Clackamas County, and I'm often at this meeting um, providing information about what we've learned at TPAC um, to inform um, JPAC's um, conversation. Very good. Mr. Myers. Morning, everyone. Martin Myers, Redland Viola Fishers Mill, CPO. I'm also the uh, CPO rep to C4 um, and uh, am involved with uh, CCI peripherally and also the CPO Summit. So good morning, everyone. Very good. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Good morning. I'm Mike Mitchell. I'm the commission president in Oregon City. My, my apologies for not knowing your appropriate title. Uh, Councillor Pratt. Valerie Proud, Tolton City Council. And Mr. Williams. Hi, I'm Steve Williams. I am a uh, principal transportation planner and I've been doing work on the uh, RTP project list, which we're going to be uh, discussing here in a few minutes. Very good, Mayor Buck. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Joe Buck, Mayor of Lake Oswego. And uh, Councilor Barry. Good morning, uh, Carolyn Berry with uh, City of Wilsonville City Council. Very good, uh, Ms. Lorenzini. Oh, and unfortunately, uh, Ms. Lorenzini, you are silent today. If you'd like to do that with American Sign Language, that would be great. Um, otherwise, we'll come back to you as soon as we can uh, get your audio fixed. Mr. Gronke. Good morning, everyone. Ed Gronke, uh, Clackamas County Citizens Rep to uh, MPAC. Very good. Uh, Councillor Lewis, you're next up. Good morning, Christine Lewis, uh, sitting on this committee as Metro Councillor District 2. And uh, owner of the best hats in town, uh, Director Brashear. Good morning, everyone. Dwight Brashear, Transit Director for SMART, uh, owned and operated by the city of Wilsonville, uh, representing transit agencies uh, all over Clackamas County. Very good, and I see we have a new member that just ju jumped on board, and I am gonna apologize in advance for butchering your name, and I think you're a counselor. Are you not, uh, Councillor Stevenjord? Yep, that's right. Rebecca Stevenjord, um, I'm a counselor in the city of Milwaukee. Very good. I believe that's the whole crew. Uh, Commissioner Savas, I'll turn it right back over to you. Great. Oh, and, well, and Mr. Wilson, I apologize. And welcome, everyone, um, to uh, our uh, C4 Metro Subcommittee meeting. Uh, so, Trent, it looks like um, Steve Williams uh, and Jamie Lorenzini are going to be presenting on the call for projects. That's correct, and Karen is here to provide a brief introduction, and uh, for as much as we can pivot to allow Jamie to work out her microphone kinks, that might be helpful. Thank you. Okay, take it away, Karen. Excellent. Well, it's nice to see you all this morning. I know that um, we spoke about um, the 2023 RTP update back in December, but many of you may not have been at that meeting. Um, but uh, what we're here to talk to you about is a coordinated project list. Um, Steve will get into more details about that coordinated project list, but it is a very interesting part of the uh, 2023 RTP update. Um, what we, the overall goal is to be able to have a coordinated list and what that means is a list of all of the different projects from Clackamas County jurisdictions within 
one particular list. I think I heard Jamie, so I, I, I think it's over there. Um, and uh, so we have been working closely with staff from all of your jurisdictions to be able to develop this list so that the list um, has all of the local priorities. Now, I think, and um, so we had sent this off to Trent late yesterday, so I don't believe that it was in your packet. Um, and so, uh, Steve, you may want to just sort of kind of acknowledge some of the types of projects and how we've been working with the different jurisdictions, and um, Jamie will also be able to touch on that. Um, the last thing um, that I will say is Trent did mention there's quite a few people in the um, um, in the attendee list, and so we had encouraged uh, staff from each jurisdiction to attend as well. So if there are specific questions, we may um, bring in some staff from individual jurisdictions. Um, so with all of that, I will hand it over to Steve and he'll talk about the 2023 coordinated RTP list. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Karen. Um, as Karen mentioned, uh, we've been working on this uh, coordinated RTP list. Uh, the regional transportation plan, whenever it is updated, is required to include a list of projects that uh, will be implemented with federal funds. So, for instance, projects that are only going to be implemented with local funds don't necessarily need to be in the RTP. And there are some other sorts of special funds that are used for transportation projects that are not required to be used in the RTP either. And so uh, examples of those might be state funds, they could be urban renewal funds, other things like that. So the project list in the RTP is somewhat narrower than it might be in your adopted transportation system plan. Uh, it doesn't represent everything you think you need to do in your community, but again, it is uh, required to address everything that will be done um, with federal funds. And so um, as a result, we have to allocate the funds out to uh, the local governments, both on the basis and, uh, we have to balance you know, their needs for those funds, as well as the funding that the federal funding that is available and the eligibility of the projects. Uh, as you'll see, when we look at the project list here in a few moments, there are actually three project lists that uh, we're required to develop. One is sort of the short term um, federally funded project list. And in this particular uh, 2023 RTP, that short-term list will include projects that are to be developed between 2024 and 2030. And then there are two sort of uh, long-term project lists. Uh, those each cover the period from 2031 to 2045. Uh, there is what we call the constrained 2031 to 2045 uh, project list which includes projects which um, the localities anticipate will be done using federal funds and which they believe they will have adequate federal funds to proceed uh, with those projects. And so that's why they're referred to as constrained. Uh, and then there's another um, project list that covers the same period, 2031 to 2045, that we refer to as the strategic list. And those, uh, the projects on the strategic list are projects that the local governments would like to develop, but at this point, they're not sure if federal funds will be available for those projects. And so they wanna have them in the RTP so that if funds should become available to, you know, due to an increase in funding or some grant source, they will be able to uh, work with Metro to get those moved into one of the financially constrained lists and ultimately uh, moved forward. Uh, but they don't, when they're in the strategic list, don't get counted against their expected budget uh, for federal funds. So um, in the past, Metro 
has allocated specific amounts of money to each of the local governments for their projects. In this RTP, they didn't do that. What they have is they've said, we've got this total amount of federal funding for each of these three um, lists, or <laughs> we uh, refer to them as buckets. We have enough money for each of these different uh, lists, and you all need to figure out within your counties how those will be distributed. So for the past oh, six weeks or so, we've been going through a process whereby we have been um, looking at those list of projects. Uh, we have asked each of the local governments to propose which projects they would like to have included in their financially constrained list, meaning that they would be eligible to receive uh, federal funding should that money become available, and then also which projects should be included in their uh, strategic list. Uh, in your memorandum on, I think it's page six of your packet, uh, there is a memorandum from Karen and I uh, kind of describing this overall uh, process. And in the middle of the first page of that memorandum, you can see the total amount of federal funding that is expected to be available uh, in uh, those different uh, funding uh, groups or buckets. So for 24 to 30, there's expected to be about $473 million in federal funds available for projects uh, in the metro area of Clackamas <clears throat> County. Uh, for the 31 to 45, period, there is expected to be 900 and almost $80 million uh, dollars available for federally funded projects within the metro area of Clackamas County. And then for the um, uh, strategic list, there is, uh, the strategic list is allowed to be the uh, total, the sum of both of the two constrained lists. And so that means that the strategic list can include uh, projects up to uh, $1,453 million. So as I said, we've spent the last uh, six weeks or so allocating, um, figuring out how the local governments have projects that they need to move into particularly the fiscally constrained lists so that they can be ready to access federal funds when those become available. So um, that has been an extensive uh, process that we've been undergoing. As I noted, pretty much the first thing that we had to do was to figure out how much money was actually available. Um, we already had a list of the federal funds, but we also had to know what was available from various other state and local sources. Uh, and the complication there is that every jurisdiction has a different collection of state and federal sources that they draw upon for their projects. Now they all draw on the uh, state road use fund um, and here in Blackness County, all of them are receiving funds from the county vehicle registration fee. But beyond that, there's a huge amount of variation in the list from the different localities uh, that we have in Plaquemines County. Some have redevelopment areas and they are drawing on urban renewal funds for some of their projects. Um, other localities have other types of special local funds that they can draw upon that are not generally available to all of the rest of the uh, localities. And so the first step in this process was developing a list of the expected revenue that was going to be available to all nine of the cities, to Clackamas County and to NCPRD, uh, which we did uh, early in January. Once we did that, we then reached out to each of those um, localities and asked them 
uh, to propose a list of projects for their communities that uh, met all of the federal guidelines and which they wanted to have included in the RTP so that they could access federal funds when those became available. Now that's a lengthy process. And in fact, we are still somewhat underway uh, with that process. Some of the communities knew exactly what they wanted and what they wanted was under the limitations of funding that they were, you know, the federal funding that they might receive. And so in general, developing the project list for those localities was not too much of a problem. But in other cases, uh, we had more complicated situations in uh, some of our cities, and we have had to spend a fair bit of time working through a process to both uh, incorporate their most important projects, but also to stay in a reasonable position with regard to their expectations for future uh, federal fund uh, availability. And so that is still um, is still ongoing. So we don't have a complete and final list to present to you this morning. What we have are a report on how that process has been going and a list of the projects uh, that are have been proposed by the localities as of uh, really yesterday morning. But this list is continuing to change. And in fact, after I prepared the materials that I gave to Trent uh, for this meeting, I actually received more proposed changes. And so over the next couple of weeks, we will be continuing to to refine that list to both um, help the cities meet their particular needs, as well as uh, stay within the limitations of the federal funds uh, that are available. Ultimately, um, this has to go to C4, which, and at the C4 meeting in March, C4 will need to um, basically recommend this the final list of projects uh, to Metro for inclusion in the 2023 RTP. And then Metro actually goes through their own process of developing a project list that incorporates all of these projects from Clackamas County, as well as from Washington County and Multnomah County and Portland, as well as uh, the DOT and the transit systems. Uh, and then once that is all done, there will be a final project list that will appear in the version of the 2023 RTP that is put forward for adoption uh, by Metro at their meeting in uh, November. So that is the process we've been going through. Uh, and I would like now to share my screen so that I can kind of show you where we're at at this moment. So could you uh, allow screen, uh, screen sharing, Trent? You should have it now, Steve, sorry. Okay, thanks. All right, so here is an overall summary of the um, total for the projects that have been forwarded by each of the localities. Um, the uh, cost of the proposed projects, which is really kind of the more interesting table here, is shown uh, down in this part of the spreadsheet. And so it has a list of all of the fund federal fund recipients. Uh, it shows a total cost for the projects in each of the three bucket, buckets that I referred to earlier, the fiscally constrained 24 to 30, fiscally constrained 31 to 45, and then the strategic 31, uh, 31 to 45. And so as an example for a city, Happy Valley uh, is proposing $83.7 million worth of projects in the short term, 24 to 30, constrained uh, bucket. They're proposing $124.6 million of projects 
in the 31 to 20, 45 time period and then $210.4 million in the strategic time frame. Those numbers were the result of Happy Valley going through the process to try to figure out which of their projects should be included uh, in the RTP and be eligible for federal funding in the future, and also a process of balancing the amount of money that was going to Happy Valley uh, and the amounts of money that were uh, proposed to go to, to the other cities and the county. Excuse me. And in our uh, piece of NCPRD. So you can see the total cost of projects in that first 24 to 30 period for the entire metro area of Clackamas County is about $419 million. For the 31 to 45 period, it is uh, $834.3 million. And for the strategic list, it is $944.9 million. Uh, million. The Next part of the table down shows the total available funding, both in regional funding and in federal and state funds. And happily, right now, the total revenue that's expected in each of these time periods exceeds the amount that has been proposed uh, by the localities uh, to fund the projects. Uh, if we had, if we got into a situation where we had more projects proposed, more cost of the projects proposed than revenue available, then we would have to work through a process with the uh, funding recipients to uh, cut back on the list of projects that were proposed. And generally you do that either by uh, pushing projects out to a later year in the funding uh, time period, or you can cut the project out of your list, or you can reduce the scope of that project, not pave as much of a road or not build as much of a multi-use path. Uh, and then finally, the bottom part of the table is just the cost and revenue comparison. And as I said, you can see that uh, we currently have on our, for the fiscally constrained 24 to 30 period, we have about $2.8 million in revenue, federal revenue expected in excess of what has been proposed. We have 169.2 uh, in excess uh, revenue and excess of costs that have been proposed. And then finally, $439.5 million on the strategic list. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the project lists or all of the localities because there are a couple of hundred projects here, and I'm not so sure that you want to spend all that much time this morning looking at them. Just as an example, I'll show you Happy Valley's list, uh, and this is the way that looks. So again, it's broken down into the fiscally constrained 24 to 30, uh, fiscally constrained 31 to 45, and there's strategic down there, and then a strategic list for 31 to 45. Whoops, I went the wrong way. And so as you can see, Happy Valley is proposing four projects in that fiscally constrained list for 24 to 30, a couple of projects related to design and construction on the 172nd, a project uh, related to Mount Scott Boulevard and King Road improvements, and then uh, an extension of 167th, or excuse me, 162nd Avenue. Um, the same thing holds true for their list down here for the fiscally constrained 31 to 45, which um, is anticipated to have a greater funding uh, set of resources because it's for a longer period of time. And so you can see Happy Valley has more projects uh, in that area. And then finally, that strategic list. And Happy Valley has chosen on that strategic list to include 
only five projects, but several of them are very high cost projects. And so they represent a substantial uh, investment on part the part of the city. As we look through uh, the other localities, the look at Gladstone it is basically just the implementation of the trolley trail bridge over the course of the next uh, years. Uh, Lake Oswego is has a slightly shorter list than Happy Valley, but it's really not all that much different. Milwaukee's list, on the other hand, is uh, much longer, uh, and but they tend to have um, lower cost projects uh, that they're proposing. Similarly, Oregon City's list, West Lynn, um, Wilsonville, and ultimately NCPRD. NCPRD really only has um, three projects, the Clackamas River Greenway Trail, the Mount Scott Scouter Mountain Loop, uh, and then a second uh, section of the Mount Scott Scouter Mountain Loop. So um, I imagine that you have probably heard more about this project list than you really want to. One thing that I should point out is that the great majority of the projects that are in the project list are projects that were already you know, in the 2018 project list and uh, adopted or approved for inclusion in the RTP at that time. And so within Clackamas County, I would guess that we have less than 10 total projects that are actually new projects that are proposed to be included in the project list um, this time. So that is where we're at, um, at your uh, meeting, your C4 meeting in uh, at the beginning of March, March 2nd. I expect to be back in front of you with a final project list and uh, allocation of uh, the funding. So, Chair uh, Sabas, uh, yep. Mr. Sherman, I'm available to respond to any questions that anyone might have. Okay, well, well, Stephen, thank you for the presentation. Uh, great job. Um, one thing that I want to just highlight, and I'm not sure how we're going to wrestle with it, and I say we, we, the county commission, and then, of course, us at C4, um, you know, on March 2nd, and that is um, the ODOT projects, which are under the regional thing, corridors, for example, the I-205 corridor. You also mentioned the tolling. So I don't know where we're going to be on this tolling issue because the projects that have been um, that I've seen thus far, none of them are solution oriented as it relates to the, the um, challenges presented by the tolling project and I, on the I-205 corridor. So the, all the, the ODOTS projects list is the, the regional, is in the, 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 the regional bucket, correct? Um, yes, it is, but it, they're really um, statewide constrained. So it's how much money um, region one can expect to receive uh, through the state for their particular uh, collection of projects. And so, as you mentioned, they've included the toll funds in there, but they also have a lengthy list of projects that are proposed to be funded by federal funds. Right. Well, you mentioned early on that the tolling, um, the tolling program was embedded in this RTP. So that's why if I start with that piece, then of course I'm going to be looking for and the commission is looking for solutions as to some of the challenges that are created by that project. And I we have seen none. So therefore, more to come, perhaps or not. But I just want to say that's one of the challenges and hiccups that we might have in this in this uh this list. So I will go to the first <laughs> hand up. Uh, well, Karen, I see you flashing. You want to yeah, say something? I, about that? I just wanted to um, also add additional information to that comment. You know, it has been challenging working within this environment and this RTP related to um, the expectations that might happen around tolling. So every single project that's in the RTP needs to be in an existing plan. And all of our existing plans were not built with tolling um, assumed within them. 
So if that makes sense, you know, you need to have a project that's in a plan, um, the, the outcomes of the tolling and the different traffic models related to tolling and the solutions, they're, they're still evolving. Right. So I think that that's one thing. But I think another thing that I'll really um, call out right now is the way that this process is set up is, is that all of, us, all of the jurisdictions are going to submit their projects that they have on their list um, on Friday and into the RTP process. And then Metro will do some analysis related to the projects that, that are submitted. And within that analysis, they will be assuming that tolling is being implemented. And so the analysis may come back and show that there are areas that we still have needs. And so there's going to be a process there in um, kind of the April timeframe where we'll be responding back. How well did these projects address the, the goals um, of the RTP? And so we're, we're anticipating that there's gonna be some time in there in the spring where there's going to be revisions um, and, and kind of fine tuning of those project lists. That's part of the whole process. But right now we're putting in what we know um, and what are all, all, what are on our plans right now. So, um, so I just wanted to also put it in that context. I'd also say in a, in, a, in a little bit, you'll hear from ODOT about their particular project list. So um, there are projects on ODOT facilities that perhaps individual jurisdictions such as Clackamas County hold on our list um, because those are important to us such as projects for intersection improvements along Highway 212. That's okay. separate from the projects that are on the ODOT list um, that you'll be hearing about a little bit later. So that's just another thing to think about with regards to how improvements happen on ODOT facilities. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, Martin, you're up. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Steve, for a nice presentation. Karen, too, um, I appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm still mostly in the dark. Now, that makes sense from the perspective of, of Redland CPO because we are outside of the metro area, of course. But as C4 rep, I know that there is substantial numbers of Clackamas County citizens that live within the urban unincorporated areas. Um, and so I, I'm coming up with two major concerns on this very large list that hasn't been disclosed yet to the CPOs, or at least to me, that I'm gonna need to be called on to vote on in March. Um, the first is just a simple question. As you reach out to jurisdictions, Clackamas County, are you reaching out to the unincorporated areas? Are you talking to Oak Grove? Are you talking to Jennings Lodge, to Sunnyside, to the other CPOs that are within the metro area, have projects potentially at, 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 at stake here, have a stake because they are the local stakeholders? Um, are you talking to those, to those groups and are they involved with it? I have not heard any word that you have been. So, I'm worried that they have not been brought to the table. Um, the other question is, how do I handle this for a March 2nd vote as the CPO rep if I don't have a list of the projects that are pending in the unincorporated areas and I haven't had a chance to talk to the CPOs that exist within those unincorporated areas about the projects? So help me out here. Uh, one, tell me what you're doing with the CPOs themselves, and then tell me how, how as rep, I'm supposed to come to an understanding and a vote on something that's gonna happen in less than what, 20 days or so. Um, and understand also that my CPOs are all volunteers. They all have their own regularly scheduled meetings. So I don't have staff I can go talk to at Oak Grove. I can only go to the council and that meets at a per particular time. So I've, I've got a lot of constraints here and I'm not really sure how to deal with it. Thank you. Right. Well, and um, something to keep in mind, Martin, is that this is not a new project list. The projects that are on the list are projects that are in Clackamas County's TSP that were previously recommended for inclusion in the county TSP by the CPOs. And so um, these projects should be consistent with the needs that the CPOs saw and identified and asked to be included in the county's plans. And the county at this point 
is simply promoting those to get them into the RTP so that at some point in the future, they might be able to access federal funds uh, to develop those projects. So there shouldn't be anything in the um, list for this RTP, for the project list for this RTP, that will be a surprise or even something that was not previously reviewed by uh, the CPO's board. And so that is why there's not time built into this process to reach out to all of the CPOs because it would really um, duplicate work that they have already done themselves. Okay, thank you, Stephen. I just want to remind everyone that we have on this topic, we have a couple more presentations. So, and we have about 20 some odd minutes to do that and take questions. So, Martin, I hear you and we will address that. It also pay attention that later this morning, the BCC will be discussing the RTP again this morning. So pay, pay attention to that too, and, and we'll circle back with you. Councilor so I will, I will not have information going into March 2nd on what is happening within the CPO areas, or will this list come out at some point prior to the meeting? And will I have any opportunity to, to actually gain a, a knowledge on what's going on? The list. I'm sorry, I don't want to take up time, but I'm lost here, and, yeah, and, and I represent some of the the largest numbers of population in 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 the urban areas in Clackamas County. I I just I I, I think I heard point, you say point you taken, Martin. Taken out to that, but yeah, help me out, please. But point point taken, Martin. As this is moving and they're coordinating, we're all learning. You're not alone. So um, there there'll be there'll be that outreach, and it'll, it'll be listed. And granted, this has been going on a long time, but there again, the changes are dynamic, so they're not they're not static. Uh, Councilor Sherman, very good, thank you, Commissioner. Um, you know, I, I agree with your uh, your comments on uh, you know as we look at these projects in relation to kind of the imp impacts and implications of tolling. You know, very difficult to to even create those projects, not knowing specifically what the outcomes will will be in a very uncertain environment. Question I have uh, is probably for Mr. Williams. So as you kind of flashed up the um, the Happy Valley projects list, it, it looked a little different than what I've seen historically. And so is there any, do do we need, is there a way staff can kind of work together to make sure that aligns with what, what I've seen or, you know, what, what are the risks if, um, you know, me as a counselor, we're going to vote on approving our list. What if that doesn't match what's on there? Is there a kind of a disconnect or... or what, what do I need to do to make sure we're communicating properly? The list that we have for Happy Valley was put forward by your staff as a recommendation to us. And we've been working closely with them to make sure that the projects that they prioritize fit into that list. So uh, it should look very familiar to you. We're not picking those projects. Uh, the, look, the projects that are coming out of the city of Happy Valley are projects that have been proposed by the city of Happy Valley. And, okay. And I, I, mean, also, I guess I, I would also add that we will double check with each of the city representatives before we submit um, the, uh, the the list. So we'll, we're going to still go through that process. As as Steve was saying, this has been kind of an iterative process where the, the revenue streams have been changing as well as the various project lists across time. And so we, just, we, will, um, we will be doing that double check. But I think the most important thing that we have learned so far is that our revenues are generally in balance with our expenditures. We're not finding that we're going to be out of balance um from uh from the amount of project costs that we have in the revenue that we expect oh right no no i just when i had noticed like on the first list you put up with the 2024 to 2030 there were like four projects listed in our happy value and i've only got three on my list so i i just didn't know if there's just like something moving around or i i just i just don't know the implications if we either have something extra on the list that we didn't mean to have there or if we had something that didn't make the list, what those long-term implications are, like from a federal funding perspective and, and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll leave that to staff to kind of work those details up. And I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and something that is it would probably be helpful to you, Councillor Sherman, is that this is only the first step. So if something shows up in the RTP list, it is still up to the city of Happy Valley, in your case, <clears throat> to ultimately secure funding for that project and then go ahead and develop it. 
And so it is not unusual for projects to be proposed in the RTP that do not ultimately get uh, developed. And that's just due to, you know, changing needs. Uh, sure. So. Yeah. No, I'm more concerned about not showing up on the list versus too much showing up on the list. So, okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're run out of time, folks. Uh, Councillor Lewis. Sure, thank you. First, following up Commissioner Savas on your notation that the tolling project is in this RTP, I think that it's significant enough to bring up here that the tolling project itself is, but the tolling revenues are not on the revenue side of the equation. Obviously, this is a balance exercise of projected money in and desired money out. And to not be able to touch those revenues goes broader into the troubles that we are seeing with the 205 project. So I want to highlight that here. My question uh, for this uh, morning's presentation is, in your spreadsheeting, do you have any demarcation or way of tabulating the projects that might have a future nexus with transit? Um, or are we going to have to come back and look later to see what percentage or which projects might um, enable future transit investments in Clackamas County? We work with the transit systems with SMART and uh, TriMet uh, in the process to identify projects that they want us to include. And that can include, you know, like improvements to the streets that are necessary to better uh, enable transit or it could improve include specific transit projects, acquisition of, of rolling stock or other building facilities. So their, their projects are incorporated. They go through a process that is more region and state oriented than the local government's project uh, list development is. So, but we're interacting with them and incorporating their uh, recommended projects into the county list. Okay. I totally understand their process, but in terms of our, our roadway improvements, do we have like any bus on shoulder right of way that we're buying on any of the land acquisition, right? Like that kind of uh, integration. Uh, I'm not aware of any bus on shoulder projects. I'm sure Dwight is more familiar with the transit list than I am. Um, and But uh, there are one of the projects that there's been a lot of discussion about has been transit oriented improvements on the Galapagos. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut in because TriMet is, is one of the presenters and maybe they can address that question uh, more appropriately than Stephen can. So Trent, uh, do you have your hand up? I see. I have my hand up. So just want to remind this group, ODOT and, and TriMet are here really more as FYIs. And I say that with the full respect of the work that they're doing to do their RTP list. You have a decision to make, which is really important. And Steve, let us know what decision this group needs to get to so that they can prepare for the information for the March C4 meeting. So my recommendation to you, um, Commissioner and, and Counselor, is that um, take the time that you need for this conversation, because this is the decision point for C4 is what's going to come out of, out of this discussion. And so my question to Steve then is, what does this group need to do or act on today in order to prepare for the March 2 C4 meeting? Is there, if there's no decision, that's fine. Then my next question would be, what will they be seeing at the March 2 C4 meeting? And when will that information be available at, at the earliest since this list is evolving? Well, what they'll be seeing will be the final version of the list that's coming out of the staff uh, coordination process. Uh, that's been taking place. And so it should include all of the projects that have been put forward and um, are proposed to receive federal funding. Um, the action that it, it is not necessary for C4 Metro to take an action today, although it might be helpful to simply take an action um, to recommend to C4 that they, um, you know, take the project list, look at the project list and make that uh, a major issue at their uh, March 2nd meeting because that is the point at which C4 will need to uh, ultimately approve that list and pass it along to Metro. So the um, materials, the list that is coming uh, out 
that is proposed for uh, Clackamas County should be available by the end of the week. Okay, uh, Trent, um, I, I couldn't help but notice on the agenda that we got a 10 minute carve out for ODOT and a 10 minute carve out for TriMet. So we don't have that much time. So maybe I can ask um, ODOT, number one, to address, you know, briefly to address some of the things that came up that related to ODOT. Um, and then just uh, just a few minutes, um, and then there's any responses, we have time for that. And then the same goes for TriMet. So can you bring in um, what you had prepared on the agenda, um, the person? Yes, Glenn, here. Glenn is here from ODOT. I'm sorry, on the um, agenda it says Neelam, who's also here, but uh, Glenn's yes. going to be the, the primary person for ODOT today. And then Tara is here from TriMet. Uh, I'm going to move the our county team back into the audience uh, since we're transitioning to this part of the discussion and then commissioner back to you. Okay. So Glenn, uh, can you just maybe address what you heard earlier as it relates to ODOT? I heard uh, a number of questions um, from different directions. So um, I'm happy to just talk blindly, but uh, maybe rephrase which of the specifics or do you want me to show you our list or? <clears throat> Uh, well, why don't, why don't I just give you um, five minutes and um, instead of the 10 that you were allotted <laughs> and uh, just do what you can with that. Okay. Sounds great. Um, uh, so I can get my screen shared fast enough. All right. I'll try to go fast. Um, if I talk too fast, let me know. <clears throat> the, one, the main thing I want to share, um, ODOT's list is not as long as the county's because most of the work that ODOT does is done through programmatic um, accounts or buckets, we call them sometimes. <clears throat> so you'll see we only have about 20 projects on what we call the capital project list, and those are places where we have a distinct solution in mind, Boone Bridge, 205, Abernathy, etc. Um, then we have corridor-wide projects where we don't have things to find, like we have active transportation management, on 205 that it lets us do viral message and signs, all kinds of different things as, as the needs come up or as we get studies to identify them. Um, then, but most of the work we do, when you see ODOT crews and construction on the ground, it's in these, what we call these region-wide operational programs. Some call them buckets. Um, so like when new RRFB pops up on a highway or new sidewalks, or for example, Tiger, all 99W is being repaved with new sidewalks, new bike lanes, everything. That's not a project in the RTP, it's out of our safety and operations um, bucket, so to speak. Let me, next slide. So I'll show you, um, basically, you know, these RTPs happen every five years. Not much gets done in between the RTP. We've got like three projects that were completed or almost completed, I mean, maybe five, depending on how you look at it. <clears throat> so we're removing those. And then with what little bit of room there is, bringing in some of those quarter wide projects to fill in some of the space from the, for the money we spent. Um, we're not changing the timeframes on things either. Um, so we're, we're moving in. I mentioned these four corridor projects. I'll get those in a minute. The new projects, as Councilor Lewis mentioned, there's the Regional Mobility Pricing Project, and that is basically the cost of installing, I don't know how, 17 or something gantries um, is what's in there for now, and doing the NEPA analysis for that, um, that that's getting started. And then the redefining the construction on I-205 includes the, the tolling, um, as you know now, to pay for that uh, construction. And then there's a trail out in the Sandy River Delta that isn't uh, interesting to this group. There was an earmark from Congressman Blumenauer that we've just added. So if you look at the last RTP, this is the, the map that went out. Those orange lines were projects. The stars are where things have been done. Um, long story, I'm keeping Outer Powell and Abernathy Bridge on the list just for now until we go through final inspection. We're not supposed to take them off the list, but we're not having to allocate any funding to them because the funding's already allocated. The new map of our project list, you can see we've got these 20 projects and you can see, you know, in this case, we've got um, the Sunrise Phase 2 out to Happy Valley. We've got uh, 212, 224, um, uh, you know, Milwaukee Expressway work. Um, obviously, Abernathy Bridge, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the I do have widening. Um, the regional mobility pricing program. There's like some flyover ramps there at 205 to, um, to I-5 North and some braided ramps or uh, ox lanes heading up toward Durham to help that North Clackamas to Washington County commute. And then obviously the Boone Bridge. I think those are the most uh, relevant to this group. I'll stop on this slide. And then um, that's my five minutes, I think. Okay, uh, thank you, Glenn. Uh, one thing to Councillor Lewis's point about the revenues and the, un, you know, you mentioned the tolling and I know, as you stated, the tolling is dedicated to the 205 project, but you also listed RMPP. Mm -hmm. And as a result of either of those two and what we've heard from ODOT 
over the last year and a half, two years, is that there, there would be revenue for projects. Now, either or, you can pick which one, but there would be there would be revenue for projects for mitigation or solutions and oriented. And I'm, I'm just, we're trying to understand that. And obviously to, again, to Councillor Lewis's point, those revenues ought to be factoring into or be present and be known so we can know how to calculate uh, and align this. So what the struggle we've had, and you don't need to respond at all because we don't have time, but the struggle that we're having is, you know, <laughs> If we don't know what the revenue is and it's not pro programmed in and we don't know what the solutions are, then we we're not we don't feel very prepared. So I'll just leave it there um, and I'm going to switch over real quickly to TriMet and then we'll take questions after that. So right. who is the TriMet person? Hi everyone, Tara O'Brien, Government Affairs Manager with TriMet. Um, I will just share one slide, not the full presentation, and open it up to questions. Hold on just a moment. There we go. Okay, you can all see the Clackamas County slide? Yes? Okay. Um, so for our RTP project list this year, I just wanted to highlight a few of the items for Clackamas County. Since we're short on time, there is a full TriMet project list in your packet today that summarizes the different buckets of projects that we have in both our constrained and strategic lists, as well as new projects that we're adding. We do have a fair number of new projects that we are needing to add for this RTP, and much of that is related to federal grant funds or earmark funds that we have received and so as well as adding several new buckets <laughs> to that align with the stiff um, programs to really be able to reference opportunities to invest in things like transit centers or better bus improvements and so i wanted to highlight a few of the new projects on our list in clackamas county as well as some of the changes that we've made so we've added the oregon city transit center project, which we've received earmark funds for and are planning to begin or have begun design and construction. Um, we are adding capacity to the Park Avenue park and ride at the end of the Portland Milwaukee light rail line, and that is a fully funded project that we are about to begin. The 82nd Ave Transit project, um, that was previously a ETC, Enhanced Transit Corridor project, and we're repurposing that project to a larger um, transit investment project was, which I, as I believe all of you know, planning is underway right now. And so we foresee there could be some changes to the project description or amount as we move closer to a locally preferred alternative later this year, but we're trying to capture all the details we do have for this RTP submittal. And then the Willamette Shoreline project, um, the railway between Lake Oswego and Portland is in disrepair and we've received some funds to repair the um, trestles and tracks on various elements of that segment. So we are adding just these state of good repair improvements to, um, to the RTP to be able to reference since we've received um, federal funds for that. And then some new buckets to highlight for Clackamas County. Um, the trans we are adding a transit centers bucket to both the short term and long term constraint because that is one of the programs of the stiff committee to be able to reference that to continue to make additional improvements to transit centers like Oregon City in the future. Um, and the same with better bus enhanced transit corridor improvements. We are just about to restart planning efforts for that program to really identify transit priority improvements that will be able to make in partnership with your communities, especially outside of the central city. Um, the first phase of ETC, a lot of that work was done in Portland Central City, the Rose Lanes project, um, and there really are a lot of opportunities to improve transit speed and reliability and add transit priority improvements along frequent service bus corridors outside of the central city. And so we are including a $27 million um, amount of funds between now and 2030 to be able to partner with communities on. And so that is one opportunity where I think we could add additional funds to corridors in Clackamas County to make some improvements for transit. But um, 
the corridors are not called out at this point. It's a bucket because we need to do more planning with you all on that. And then some changes that have been made to our project list as has been presented to you in the past, the high capacity transit planning project that Metro has gone through has conducted significant analysis about readiness for high capacity transit investment. And so we have at this point continued to maintain that tier one high capacity transit projects are the priority to come to agreement and level of investment on, um, which includes Southwest Corridor, 82nd Avenue, um, TV Highway, Interstate Bridge Replacement, and Montgomery Park Streetcar. And so any of our constrained funds um, are pointing towards those projects for high capacity transit investment, as well as a very small amount towards continued project development for the Steel Bridge transit bottleneck and a very small bucket um, partnered by, with other agencies after 2031 for project development for future corridors. But we are really drawing the line and removing projects that ranked in tier four of that high capacity transit investment as not ready for additional investment. And um, after 2045 would be the time frame for getting through the high right. capacity transit vision. So we're proposing removing um, the longer term corridors that had been on TriMet strategic list to begin with and adding some of the tier two HCT corridors to our strategic list. So, um, so those are the major items I wanted to highlight for you all kind of some highlights on what we're still working on, but I'm happy to take questions. All right. Uh, thank you, Tara. I know we're strapped for time here. Yeah. Um, Councillor Barry, your hands up. Thank you. Um, thank you to TriMet and ODOT for your presentations. I learned a lot. Um, I wanted to start by congratulating ODOT on advancing the MAP4, uh, MAP Project 4, the I-5 southbound uh, project, which is Wilsonville Road to Wilsonville Hubbard Highway. And I'd like to clarify, is this project, um, the ODOT I-5 Boone Bridge and Seismic Improvement Project, and I also wanted to ask ODOT to advance the French Prairie Bike Pedestrian Emergency Bridge as an alternative transportation facility for the I-5 Boone Bridge. I was wondering what they were going to do to accommodate the, the bicycle pedestrian mobility uh, safety along the interstate. Thank you. Yeah, I can answer that pretty quickly. Yes, indeed. The names of these RTD projects don't sound like the names of the things that we know. It is the Boone Bridge, but it's called I-5 South Wilsonville to Harvard. Yeah, I did it. But yes, it is the Boone Bridge projects. Absolutely right on that one. And we have a commitment through the bike bill and through all of our modal planning to have bicycle travel in, in the area. So the question is, do we do it on the new Boone Bridge or are we able to do it with the French Prairie in, instead? Um, you know, if you look at Strava, which is where athletes track their time, you can definitely see that that corridor gets bicycle use for sure. So um, I actually was speaking with Matt Freetag, our area manager, about just the other day, and it is a commitment, but he doesn't have any details yet on what the, what the, the until we get into NEPA and, and whatnot in the design to figure out what that would be. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Councilor Sherman. Quick question. Um, this is probably a TriMet question. So um, and I apologize if you mentioned this and I just missed it. Do we, I mean, a lot of projects going on, kind of, do we know kind of what the percent of the capital budget is going in, into Clackamas versus out of Clackamas as we kind of look at the broad array of, uh, of projects? I don't have a specific number in terms of capital budget since we do have so many buckets, but I will at least point to all those new projects that we did add to the constrained list for Oregon City Transit Center, Park Avenue Park and Ride, 82nd Ave Transit Project does have a large portion in Clackamas County. And I will just note on that point, our projects, the money in our revenue forecast is not only the money TriMet is bringing to the table, but very much contingent on partners to help with local match, especially for high capacity transit projects to make projects happen. And so, um, Though I don't have a specific percentage on the amount TriMet is putting into Clackamas County, I will also note that our revenue forecasts and our projects do cover implementation of Forward Together from a transit service perspective as well. And we 
do include slight service increases after that. And so we will continue to um, add service in Clackamas County and that is assumed in our forecast, but I can look into that a bit more. There are several new projects I was able to highlight in Clackamas County more than other um, presentations I've given. Very good, thank you. Yeah, and of course the thing of interest, uh, Tara, you're maybe new to this group a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but, the, but I think the issue with us is getting um, access to transit and coverage, essentially. The capital projects are nice and I can see where they help in that regard. But I can tell you on the corridors that are at least one of them that's listed in Clackamas County, um, I forgot what tier it is, but um, the, the issue there is people getting to the corridor, mm -hmm. not not the level of service. Obviously, it's just getting to it. That's our biggest challenge. Uh, Mr. Brashear, you're up next. Yeah, good morning and thank you. Um, uh, Tara, um, you know, I have the benefit of kind of uh, wearing two hats. I participate on the, both Washington County and Clackamas County. I think out of fairness, uh, though it is not uh, located in Clackamas County, it does have implications in Clackamas County. So can you talk about uh, recent decisions made about the Southwest Corridor Project uh, so that uh, this group understands, uh, you know, what, uh, what we're looking at there? Yes, absolutely. Thanks. Dwight, so we in our last in the last RTP, the 2018 project, we had included the entirety of Southwest Corridor in the constrained forecast, including construction. Obviously, with the funding measure in 2020 not passing, that had been a significant funding source to advance that project. And so we have continued to include a small amount of ongoing project development in the short-term forecast for Southwest Corridor, as well as worked with partners to identify some revenues that we could point to in the out years constrained forecast. So after 2031 to include a portion of the Southwest Corridor project and a large enough portion that it does keep it on the constrained list for the purpose of modeling and point an important signal that this project remains a priority, but there is still not enough local revenue to be able to advance this. We need a new source of funds to be able to fully complete this project and deliver it, but there is still commitment to making this happen. And so Washington County Coordinating Committee on Monday did make did vote to add some of their constrained revenue specifically towards match for Southwest Corridor to signal that this remains their top transit priority that they want to make happen. So it's at least continuing to keep it alive <laughs> as a project and recognize that there's more work to be done, but that there are some local commitments to continuing to advance it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Dwight. Uh, Councillor Pratt, last uh, question. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I just wanted to express disappointment and I, I wondered why you uh, removed the West upgrades from the list because I, I know that Southwest Corridor is still on the long-term hopeful list without funding, but you're taking away the 96 line. So we in Twelton have no direct, you know, fast route now to downtown. And on top, the, my second point I just wanted to say is to echo what um, Commissioner Sava said about needing, we need, um, ways to get people to these transit corridors and you know especially in Clackamas County. Thank you. Absolutely. And so I will quickly first say we do have a, a small a very small access to transit bucket that TriMet maintains on our list to continue to show that that is a need. Um, but we really do work with local partners to deliver those access to transit projects. That's not in our jurisdiction. Um, crosswalks to bus stops, ADA improvements, things like that are do sometimes show up on our list, but less the larger access to transit projects. Um, in terms of West, we um, it's the longer term double tracking project that we are removing from our strategic list after analysis, just showing the um, that that corridor is less ready for a additional significant investment in double tracking and the frequency upgrades, though we could, um, there is some frequency updates possible um, in order to really increase service throughout the day and increase frequency, we'd have to buy additional trains. And so that large project is the um, 
the one that has just not seemed feasible to include in the strategic list and based on the low ridership that we currently see in that corridor. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna close with a comment and then pass this on to the next agenda item to um, Councillor um, Councilor Sherman. Um, and that is, um, you know, I understand the, the different bucket of operations and maintenance for TriMet and also the capital bucket. And I think that if there's anything that on the capital bucket that can be done to improve access in light or in, in lieu of apparently uh, resources to put shuttles in, is to put more park and rides in in strategic locations. Oregon City begging for that along along some of these corridors because if if frankly if you want to get more access and ridership and and you have more capital dollars available typically than op operations and maintenance, uh, park and rides is a means of access. So I'll close with that. And Councilor Sherman, the next agenda item is yours. Thank you, Commissioner Savas. So I think we've got a TPAC update. If we could kind of keep that. Very quick. Um, don't want to keep people too much past the uh, the top of the hour. Yeah, I can be brief if you can hear me. You can hear me. Oh gosh, victorious! Success is wonderful on a Wednesday. Um, so TPAC really brief. I won't keep or quick flyover of your JPAC agenda, getting you ready for the meeting tomorrow. Uh, JPAC has. Three topics that might be of interest. One is the 2023 RTP update. We've hashed that out here, so I won't repeat it. Um, another major thing JPAC is doing is an action item for the purpose of endorsing the preferred alternative for the earthquake ready Burnside Bridge project. Um, and by way of background on that, TPAC recommended in January that JPAC endorse the preferred alternative. Um, alongside the adoption of the preferred alternative by JPAC and the Metro Council, Multnomah County anticipates submitting the construction phase of the project as part of the 2023 RTP call for projects um, to be considered in the RTP financially constrained project list. Inclusion of the construction phase um, would satisfy the federal requirements that must be met for FHWA to ensure a record of decision for the project. Uh, so that's just a heads up. The other heads up is um, JPAC will be receiving an update on the Climate Smart Strategy, which is the JPAC Council Workshop Recap, and an update on climate-friendly and equitable communities. Included in our TPAC staff memo today in your packet, we've included some dates that Metro proposes to comply with the CFEC requirements. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at our TPAC update, um, which may be the main things to be aware of. Are there any questions? All right, open it up to the group. Ms. Lorenzini, thank you very much for your fine insights. Any questions for Ms. Lorenzini today? All right, you are off the hook. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. Jumping to our next agenda item is an impact debrief. Um, did I did we lose uh, Commissioner Shull along the way? It looks like we may have. Um, uh, anybody up for for an impact update? I can throw it out there. Mayor Buck, you can. Whatever your choice is. Um, go ahead. I have I have notes if you need me to though. Okay, I think it. Uh, I mean, it seems like we've we've updated on impact like six different times at different meetings. So uh, last uh, last go around was an update on the. Uh, the high capacity uh, transit strategy, um, you know, that you, you're all very much familiar with. We also uh, had an update on the uh, the garbage and recycling system facilities plan. Um, and so that was uh, very interesting, you know, to, to kind of address the uh, the needs on, you know, the west side of the metro area that uh, that is apparently a very long distance to uh, to get to these uh, these areas. And I think that was all that we had at the last, last meeting. Am I missing anything? trying to get us back on track right at on 840. Look at that. So with that, any questions, comments on impact before I turn this back over to Mr. Wilson? It's yours. All right, thank you very much. We're transitioning now to essentially a city caucus to make decisions about who will sit on the JPAC city's seat and also the impact other cities seat. So there's a member and an alternate decision that you get to make for both of those. 
And I recommend that we start with the JPACT discussion because there's already been some nominations that have been sent to me. Uh, that nomination includes Mayor Buck as the primary and Councillor Sherman as the alternate. If there are other nominations, this is the time to let me know. I'm seeing none. Uh, so I just, I will say, I'm, as the county staff person, I'm just here to facilitate, right? This is a really a city's decision and I'm here to help you. Uh, according to the JPAC bylaws, um, this has to be in, in a recorded vote of some sort. And so I'm gonna do my best here, but I, um, we have, I have this poll. I'm gonna see if I can launch this poll. Give me a second. It's really simple. Hopefully you're seeing something come through now. It says Mayor Buck is primary and Councillor Sherman is alternate. Look yes or no just like in high school or middle school, passing those notes. And this will record something in Zoom for me. Are y'all seeing this poll come through for you? Uh, yes, but it appears that uh, hosts and panelists cannot vote. Oh, you know what? That's great. That makes that easy. Pretty <laughs> so, cool, huh? Yeah, so who gets to vote then? Uh, if, <laughs> if not for the host and the panelists, that's, that's wonderful. Attendees? <laughs> All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll call this one that we, uh, did our best and tried for. And so I will, this is a recorded meeting and I think a hand raise is a recorded function as well. And I'll uh, I'll bite the bullet with Metro staff if, if that's um, something to have to navigate later. Um, so perhaps a, a hand vote amongst the cities will be sufficient for today's purposes in the good faith that we tried. <laughs> Very good. Do you wanna, do you wanna call for the vote or uh, how, how shall we do this? Just, uh, just a show of hands, a show of hands for yes and a show of hands for no? Yes, please. Um, cities only. Cities only, okay. Well, um, so uh, those in favor of the uh, slate proposed, uh, let's show a raise of hands. All right, all hands say yes. Uh, any no's? I didn't notice that there were any that didn't, that didn't or abstains. All right. Looks like we uh, we have our JPAC uh, uh, members in place. High Excellent. Five. Congratulations, Mayor Buck and Councilor Sherman. Uh, these are busy meetings. Um, we can revisit with the TPAC team who um, who supports that, that function. It's currently uh, Jamie Lorenzini from Happy Valley and Dana Webb from Oregon City. Um, they have they also have a rotational membership and that's been decided based on you know who who is the member at the time um, and who can provide support so uh, we'll work with the TPEC team to revisit that discussion and that that may be another decision that y'all uh, get to weigh in on so stay tuned on that uh, transitioning to the impact other cities seats this one's a little tighter of a decision it's cities only and not Oregon City or Lake Oswego because y'all already have automatic seats. And so it would be uh, here today, Wilsonville, Milwaukee, Tualatin, Happy Valley. Um, Gladstone would be in this group as well as Johnson City and River Grove, um, but they're not here today. So amongst the four of you, <laughs> um, do you have nominations for who would be sitting in that impact other cities seat? So, so question, Trent, is this the, the seat that I currently hold, hold or is this the complimentary seat? This is a different one. This is the seat that you currently hold uh, at Impact, um, representing the other cities, not named like Oswego or Oregon City. Gotcha, gotcha. And am I able to nominate myself? Yes. Uh, I would love to continue in that role uh, in that Impact seat, but I am certainly open to anyone who would love to take on that uh, responsibility. Is there an alternate to the position? Um, well, while new to this group, I'm not new to conversations about MPAC and JPAC and urban planning. So I would be interested in um, getting more involved in those conversations. Very good. So, uh, Councillor Stavanger, are you saying that you would like to uh, be in the alternate position? Um, sure. Yeah, I'm open to that. I'll All be right. your wingman. Very, very good. Thank you. Uh, any other takers that uh, want to step up for either of those positions. All right, looks like we have a vote to take. Mr. Wilson, do we take these as separate positions or as a slate, or does it really matter? I would say to take it as a slate since there are no competing positions here. All right, all those in favor with uh, 
me <laughs> and Councillor Stemmenjorda as uh, as the alternate for MPAC. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Baird. Are you are you voting? You're getting close to voting. Okay. Um, well, I didn't finish my stuff yet. Come on. Um, all those in favor of that slate, let's see a show of hands. Looking around the room. Okay. Mr. Wilson, you've got that. Uh, any opposed? I didn't notice there were any that, that or any abstains. Done deal. Easy peasy. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, sorry about the processed vote and the polling. We'll work on that. We don't do a lot of those at C4, and so we'll improve on that one. <laughs> Thanks for your help and for letting me know about the technical uh, nuances there. We'll work on that. Uh, that's all that I have for this particular meeting. Um, I've heard and know the concerns about the information for the, the project list in the earlier discussion. And so once I have those from the staff teams, I'll make sure that that's available for those C4 members who will be needing to vote on that. If it's available before the packet goes out, I will um, try to give it to the C4 members, but it will absolutely be in the packet a week in advance. That's only a week and a day away uh, because February is such a short month, as we already know. Um, so on February 23rd is when the packet will go out. It's so early, or it feels super early to me. Uh, Commissioner Savas. Very good. Yeah, um, so I gather there's a little bit of leftover time. Okay. Um, one thing I want to, because there's so many new faces here, one thing I wanted to, to remind everyone or inform everyone for those who don't know, um, and that is that the uh, this group does not really make decisions. Um, what we just saw here was a function of the cities, for example. So that was a city only. So we, you know, we are convened or allowed to convene either, you know, through, um, you know, metro processes for the for that. But the main purpose, just to give you a little bit of history, the main purpose of this particular group, which used to be called pre-impact, pre-JPAC, uh, was to just coordinate before those meetings um, so that we, where possible, could coordinate and be more effective at the table on behalf of Clackamas County and our, our cities within. Um, the, the, this is a subcommittee uh, of the Greater C4, and Clackamas County is by population half urban, half rural, and Metro is approximately half the, half of that, covers half of that population, mostly urban, obviously, or, or urban for sure. And um, uh, so again, some of the decisions we make or recommendations we make go to for final approval to the C4 body, which again is all of it, which includes districts, CPOs, and others. And there's also some ex officio seats around the table, like the Port of Portland, if they attend, and some of the other agencies. So um, just want to give that background. And um, and are there any questions related to that? Uh, I can answer them or Trent can answer them. If, if you think of something later, Trent's a great resource. And I also want to acknowledge Trent's great work of managing all of these <laughs> different committees and so forth. And, um, you know, so is are there any questions to that? I have one more thing I want to mention, but I'm going to be respectful. I don't jumble everything together here. Okay, great. No questions. So last, um, Martin, I heard you well. Um, so what's you're, it's not lost on me, nor is it lost on the people that are in the cities. Westland's not here, for example, but Oregon City is. But we're all hearing that, and I think there's a lot of angst, frankly, right now about how or what we're going to do, um, whatever their particular issue is. For rural, there's there's issues that are unrelated to tolling that are existing. Uh, obviously, that goes for in the cities. There's existing problems that have nothing to do with tolling. But I think what we're all trying to do is making sure that, you know, everyone's being heard, whether you're in a city or whether you're in the unincorporated area. And these are all being factored in. And I'm having a really difficult time trying to talk to my constituents across, again, the whole county, cities included, of how and what we're doing and explain how things are funded and not. So I really appreciate Councillor Lewis earlier making the statement or the concern about we really don't know what monies are there. And, and you know, my concern about how, you know, how or what solutions are going to be identified for tolling impacts and let alone where the funds come from. So there's a lot of unknowns and none of us are sleeping well. And I will at least I, I'll speak for me. I'm not sleeping well at night on this one. So um, and um, that's all I had. 
Uh, Councilor Sherman, back to you. Very good. Appreciate the comments and uh, always, uh, always good insights from you, Commissioner Savas. Um, we we do appreciate that. Um, wow, actually got us caught back up again, and we're ready to rock and roll. Anyone else have anything for the uh, for the good of the order? Well then, with that, um, make today the the best one yet, huh? Let's go out there and uh, fight the good fight. Take care, everyone.